Hey, you're alive. When I dragged you out of the river, I thought you were never gonna wake up. I checked your pockets for ID, a phone, maybe? I hope you don't mind. But all I found was some loose change. So, wanna tell me who you are? Well, it's nice to meet you, and I'm sorry to pry, but any idea why you were floating down the river? What's the last thing you remember? You're an archaeologist? Then you'll definitely want to hear this. I don't know if it's exactly what you're looking for, but there are some ruins just behind you. Roman, I think. I need you to go in there and see if you can find a guy named Al for me. He went in there a few hours ago, and he hasn't come out. I've been freaking out, wondering if he's trapped or injured or worse. I would have gone in after him, but he made me promise to stay here, no matter what. There's no way I'm leaving without him, so I'm just kind of stuck here, waiting. I need... what I mean is, I was hoping you wouldn't mind going in there to find him? If you can do that, I can get both of you back to civilization in my boat. Please? Oh, of course. Sorry, I don't mean to be pushy, I just... What do you want to know? You really don't remember? We're in Italy. This river is the Tiber. Oh, there's not much to tell. Feels like I've spent my whole life in a dead-end job with an endless commute. Know what I mean? Oh, uh, I'd rather not say if it's all the same to you. Fine. Sorry if I sounded cagey, it's just that I don't always get the best reactions when I introduce myself. My name's... Karen. You're welcome. 
Always happy to help. Was there anything else you wanted to ask? He's the guy who washed up on the riverbank not long before you did. I thought maybe you two knew each other. I guess not. But maybe the two of you can piece together what you're doing here. In any case, you'll like him, I'm sure. Once you find him, that is. Not much, really. But imagine what you might find in there. Priceless ancient artifacts. Al... What am I, an idiot? You could hike a long, long way in any direction and never find another soul. Trust me. Great. So you're ready to go look for Al? Thank you. The entrance is just past those columns behind you. Please, hurry. Oh, and he left this here. But I think you'll need it more than I will. If you're reading this, it means I've discovered the entrance to an ancient Roman city hidden deep underground. Its existence is long forgotten. All knowledge of it lost. ...of it lost, except in the Latin inscription here. It reads, you who wish to enter the city, Step forth and be judged. The virtuous shall be rewarded with eternal life in paradise. The wicked shall find themselves showered in gold, but in vain. For this 
shall be their final resting place. Could an underground city have remained a secret for all this time? Could people have survived down there, against the odds? It seems there's only one way to find out. If I'm not back in an hour, I'm somewhere on the other side. Consider this an invitation, or a warning. Al Worth. Whoever reads this, I'm sorry you had to find me like this. And worse, that you'll suffer the same fate I did. I've spent a lifetime in this place, going around and around in circles, searching for a way out. The inscription was right. There is no way back. And here there are only two options. Death, and that godforsaken doorway into the past mistake of stepping through it. I wanted to set things right. And I tried. I really tried. Whatever I did, it took me right back to the beginning. Don't make the same mistake. Better to end it all now. And find out what awaits you beyond that portal.
Uh, salve, friend. I'm Galerius. Mind telling me who you are and what you were doing in the Shrine of Proserpina? what you're talking about oh wait are you a bit you know not right in the head <sighs> that's all right friend everyone's welcome here we sort of lose track of the date down here but it feels like the beginning of spring to me so I'd say early March it's 817 AUC Sorry, you look confused. 817 years since the founding of Rome. Which part of the Empire are you from, exactly? C.E.? No idea what you're talking about. But, listen... Most folks seem a bit confused when they get here, but you... you seem very lost, and in more ways than one. So, let me make this nice and simple for you. Live by our law here, and we'll all get along just fine. Not laws, law. There's just one, the golden rule, and the punishment for breaking it's... well... It's kind of horrific, but our magistrate insists we take all newcomers to see him, so I guess I'll let him fill you in. So then, are you coming? Follow me. When I first arrived, I couldn't believe there were people living down here. But, as you can see, we've got a nice little community now. Only 23 of us at the moment, if you count the three who are missing. No idea how, since nobody knows a way out. But it's just big and dark enough to get lost in, if you're not careful. Aren't you going to introduce me to your pretty new friend, Galerius? Keep it in your loincloth, Aurelia. I'm taking her to see the Magistrate. That pompous old boar won't be Magistrate for much longer. Anyone who helps vote him out today, drinks at my bar for free tonight. Ugh. Politics. I'd stay clear of it and her, if I were you. She's... uh... it's not my place to say. Down on your right is our farm, where I grow all the food you'll ever want. As long as all you want is leek, cabbage and wheat. Huh. That one usually gets a chuckle. The bloodless shadows wander without flesh or bone. Ah, don't mind Livia. She means well. She's just been in a bad place since... Well, you know, I don't know what happened to her. Up here on your right is the chasm. If you've got a weapon, it belongs way down at the bottom. Up on your left is the forum, where you can visit the market or get yourself patched up in Lucretia's clinic in the Shrine of Apollo. Most of us have almost nothing. Just what we had on us when we arrived, and what we've been able to make and scrounge up since. And this central plateau is where the Magistrate and the other patricians live. So, don't expect a warm welcome. Galerius, you're meant to be working the farm, not trudging dirt into the village. Take it easy, Horatius. I was just taking our new friend here to see the Magistrate. Well, he's asked me to escort the newcomer personally. The farm. Go. Now. You'd better go with him. But just remember, they're not like you and me. Don't let them use you. What was that? What did you just say? I said, it'll take some getting used to. Yeah, I'm watching you, farm boy. Greetings, citizen. My name's Horatius. Magistrate Sentius asked me to escort you to him personally. Follow me, please. I expect the Magistrate wants to brief you about the Golden Rule. It shouldn't take too long. He's busy preparing for the election later today. Follow me. The only thing you really need to understand right now is the Golden Rule. Let me see if I can explain it this way. When I was serving in the Legion, 
If there was a mutiny brewing in one cohort, the legate in charge wouldn't waste time finding the bad apples among hundreds. They just divided us into groups of ten, made us draw straws, and whoever drew the short straw had to be executed by the other nine. Didn't matter whether he'd done anything wrong. One of us in ten would die for the crimes of the Collective. We call it decimation. If that seems like rough justice to you, you're in for a rude shock. Because the Golden Rule is exactly ten times worse. The Magistrate can explain the rest. He's up these stairs. What now? Divine version of the practice of decimation in the Legion. By threatening to execute one in ten men, the idea is to ensure order and discipline among everyone. And it works. If you knew you could be executed because your brother in arms is planning a mutiny, well, you'd bloody well watch him like Hundred Eyed Argus, wouldn't you? Because your only chance of saving yourself is to stop bad things before they happen. Makes us all responsible for keeping each other in check. It's brutal, of course, but effective. The Legion wouldn't be the most formidable force in the world without it. War crime? Isn't that a contradiction in terms? As Cicero said, in times of war the law falls silent. Seems that way. War crimes. Ridiculous. What's done is done. I was forced to execute my brothers in arms, and those memories will always visit me in my sleep. But life is harsh, and I've come to accept my lot. As with the Golden Rule, I don't have any control over it. So railing against it would be like trying to stop the seasons or the tides. As Seneca the Younger wrote, true happiness is to enjoy the present without anxious dependence upon the future, not to amuse ourselves with either hopes or fears, but to rest satisfied with what we have, which is sufficient, for he that is so wants nothing. If you like. He's one of the better commanders I've ever had, that's for sure. Good stoic. Lives by Seneca's words. Treat your inferior as you would wish your superior to treat you. Can't ask for much more than that. I'm a legionary of the first Italica, but there's not a lot of fighting down here. So the Magistrate has assigned me other duties. I act as the Magistrate's right-hand man. Keeping an eye on his daughters. Uh, daughter, I should say. And the others. And making sure they're all behaving. I also keep a register of new arrivals. I'm from Liguria, up north originally. I was doing all right for myself. Twelve years into my service. Had a nice girl lined up for when it was all over. Not anymore. She's probably figured I'm long gone and moved on by now. Try not to think about it. My commander sent me to deliver a message to Rome. While I was there, I thought I'd do something nice for my girl and pick up a little pendant from a silversmith. That's when the crowd started flooding through the streets, shouting fire. People were screaming, trampling each other. Then some genetric and future child tried to take advantage of the chaos and pinch my pendant. I remember chasing him through the crowds, down towards the river, and then nothing. Blacked out and woke up near here. No idea how I ended up floating so far downriver. But 
Unfortunate to be alive, I suppose. Ah, don't be. As Seneca the Younger said, difficulty strengthen the mind as labor does the body. That said, Centilla's disappearance has been more difficult than I'd care to admit. Not that it's any of your business, but my loyalty is and always will be with Sentius. Unfortunately, I don't think my vote is going to make any difference today. See, Domitius has been going around town, shoring up votes for Maliolis with lies, bribery, and intimidation. The man's a savage, but he's a gladiator, so people fear and respect him more than they should. Sentius knows about it, of course, but he doesn't have the same rat cunning as Maliolis. This place will be different with that sleaze at the helm. But I try not to worry about things I can't change. I appreciate the thought, but you're new here, and I just can't see how you could make an impact in the time between now and the election this afternoon. In any case, if you're interested in the election, go and have a chat with Equitia, the Vestal Priestess. She'll be overseeing proceedings. I went around asking the same questions when I first arrived. Never did find a way out. But I learned how to accept my situation. To bear trials with a calm mind robs misfortune of its strength and burden. That's from Seneca the Younger, if you're interested. I don't see why not. Just make sure I get it back by tomorrow. Of course. All right. <laughs> Whatever are you wearing? <laughs> oh, I wish Horatius would stop letting barbarians in here. What do you want? You know, some people say it's the creation of an all-seeing god who's watching everything we do. But what kind of an awful, incompetent god would let my sister go missing on his or her watch? Did you hear that? Curse you, you coward! Where is my sister? What do you have to say for yourself? No response. Nothing. <laughs> That's what I thought. I'm telling you, this mysterious god of ours has to be asleep on the job. Either that, or, like people are saying, it really is just a children's fable my father is exploiting to frighten us into behaving. Hmm, I suppose we will. Oh. 
Ugh, what is it with you people? You heard the rumor that my little sister escaped and figure I must know a way out too. Is that it? Well, that's just a stupid rumor. We have no idea what happened to Centilla. I wish you mouth breathers would just leave me alone. I don't know. Can you? Can you tell me how a person could have disappeared from a city with no exits and no crime? Was she snatched away by the harpies? It was three weeks ago. We ate our evening meal together, and I remember she seemed happy. In love. We went into our rooms, I went to sleep, and when I woke up, she was gone. That's it. I think so, yes. But she was very careful about keeping his identity a secret. Even from me. Because our father had plans to marry her off, eventually, and even a rumor about her attachment to some mystery man might have ruined those plans. I don't know, but it's been three weeks since she disappeared and he hasn't come forward. That might speak to a guilty conscience. All I know is, whoever he is, he's still here in the city. You really aren't from here, are you? All Roman women are named after their fathers. I think it's their way of branding us, like cattle to be sold at market. His family name is Sentius, so I'm Sentia because I'm the eldest. And my little sister is formerly Sentia Minor, but she is affectionately known as Centilla. Why? Because I'm on this couch and not pacing about the villa, wasting energy. I hope you're not insinuating I'm somehow pleased with her disappearance. Ugh, you're awful. Get out of my villa and never speak to me again. We're finally alone. I assume you already know who I am. May I know your name? A curious name to match a curious accent. But I digress. I see you have the piercing and astute eyes of Athena. You must be a woman of great learning. We're always happy to welcome another scholar to our little community. Equitia will be delighted to meet you, I'm sure. Now, you're probably wondering why I summoned you, and I'll get to that. But first, take a look at this wondrous place, would you? A secret city built deep in the mountains many hundreds of years ago. Indeed. More importantly, consider the miraculous community we've built here over the last seven months. Twenty-two complete strangers brought together by the fates living and working together in our own little paradise. And in all that time, 
Not a single sin has been committed. No fights, no theft, nothing. Have you ever witnessed something so extraordinary as a city without sin? Until I came here. But the reason for this, this miracle is as simple as it is terrifying. If even one person commits a sin here, every last one of us will die. You see, the builders of this place, whoever they were, left inscriptions warning, the many shall suffer for the sins of the one. From what we can gather, breaking the law here will anger the gods and provoke a terrible punishment. Like the curses of Medusa and Midas combined, turning us all to gold. We've come to call it the Golden Rule. It's extraordinary that we've survived as long as we have, and each day I grow more and more afraid that our time in the sun is all up. And now it seems that day is finally here. All that matters is that somebody in this city is about to break the Golden Rule. Why else would Proserpina send you now? Unless you and I can stop them, our doom is assured. I know that's a lot to take in, and you look like you have questions. Please, ask away. An intelligent question. There was a good deal of debate about that in our first weeks here. Does it refer to crimes or to some other ill-defined wrong? Of course, everyone agrees on the basics. No theft, no assault, and certainly no murder. But beyond that, it was more difficult to reach a consensus. What about lying, insulting someone, blasphemy, trespass, trying to escape, bribery, Infidelity, suicide. As magistrate, I had to exercise leadership, and so I made a decision. We must uphold the laws of the Empire to a standard never before seen. And we must honor the peace of the gods, the sacred accord between the gods and the people of Rome. It is only by offering the gods the proper respect that we may prosper, as Rome has for centuries. Barbaric? Barbaric? What are you talking about? The Empire is the most civilizing force in the known world. Rome is a beacon of light in the darkness. For 800 years she has borne great statesmen, philosophers, poets, artists and engineers. We have comprehensive laws protecting the rights of our citizens, which have unified countless warring tribes all across the Mediterranean and beyond, from Gallia to Judea. All our citizens are treated the same, regardless of the color of their skin or their sexual preference. Can you say the same? 
When our people are starving, they are given food rations. And when they are wronged, they have the right to bring the guilty party before the magistrate. Our laws forbid treason, murder, assault, and rape, as well as theft and arson, and so on. No other civilization in the world is so advanced, and you have the, the hubris to call us barbaric? talking about our practice of decimation? Of course. We could hardly unite all these warring tribes without a disciplined, formidable legion. my pronouncement on the subject. Unfortunately, there are still those here who resist, whispering blasphemous and treasonous lies in the shadows. I would be keeping a close eye on them if I were you. You see, in my search for a way to save my people, I learned of an ancient ritual to Proserpina, the goddess of the cycle of life and renewal. It's said to open a doorway in time, so that if the unthinkable happens, one person can pass through it and travel back to the past. And when I saw you arrive in a flash of light from the goddess's shrine, I knew that person was you. You don't belong in our time, do you? Two thousand years? That is unfathomable. Please, tell me, in your time, what did you see? What had become of us, of this? city. I have imagined it, our downfall, a thousand times, but it still breaks my heart to hear the truth of it. stare at a problem for so long that you can't see it for what it is anymore. What's needed here is a fresh pair of eyes. The less I prejudice the independence of your investigation, the better. those who wish to vote me out of office so that they can pursue their own misguided political agenda. 
Frankly, their selfishness and recklessness risk destabilizing the entire city. I would be looking very carefully at them if I were you. If I understand Persephone's ritual correctly, that problem should take care of itself. Let me see if I can explain. If you manage to prevent the sin that breaks the golden rule, I won't need to bring you here. I won't create the portal, and you will never have been able to come here. Thus, you have created a paradox. If this occurs, you should be flung back to your own time, having changed the past for all of us. Make sense? ritual sacrifice to Proserpina. I stumbled across instructions. I have to recite a prayer, and of course, as with all rituals, some sacrifice is involved. Usually that means wine or food, or in some cases, a live animal. In this case, the sacrifice is rather more costly. The life of the person performing the ritual. I don't suppose you saw any sign of me? in the future. Ah, I assume that was me. If I'm forced to perform the ritual, it's going to cost me everything. You'll try to make sure I don't need to use it, won't you? Well, I suppose that's all I can ask for. Well, I believe you're in the best position to go around asking people questions. You're new here, and it'll seem perfectly normal. As for me, well, it pains me to say my attempts to impose order have not earned me many friends. I fear I may not even remain magistrate after today's election. The people here would only treat my curiosity with suspicion. You shouldn't have that problem, though, unless, of course, you get off on the wrong foot. So, are you with me? Can I count on you to figure out who's about to break the golden rule? Wonderful. Now, I need you to investigate the city, talk to everyone, help them if it will win their trust. I authorize you to enter private homes and inspect possessions and documents, unless of course you're asked to leave. Figure out who the culprit is, and as soon as you have a name, come back and tell me immediately. Oh, and one last thing. If I were you, I'd start my investigation by visiting Lucretia at the Shrine of Apollo in the Forum. I heard wailing from there not long ago. Seems like something's not right.
Do I need to ask Horatius to escort you out of here? Get out, you horrid barbarian! Centilla, would you? What now? All right. Ah, you've returned. Do you have any news about your investigation? If I did, I'd have led these people out of here already. Ask them. Good. Now, was there something else you wanted to discuss? I've had plenty of time to think about it. Let me see if I can sum up my thoughts. I've always considered my guiding star to be the well-being of the Roman people. Our survival and prosperity have always hinged upon honoring the peace of the gods, the sacred accord between the gods and the people of Rome. Give the gods what they want and we all prosper. Dishonor them and we all die. It's as simple as that. The real enemy in this place is not the golden rule, but human failings. The temptation to slide into degeneracy, greed, and hubris. I trust that answers your question. Sextus Centius Imperiosus is my name, though magistrate is the proper way to address me. Before I wound up here, I was a decurion in the cavalry of Imperial Rome, helping protect civilization from the barbarians. I was elected seven months ago, uncontested because of my command experience. Since then, there's been growing agitation for another election. They're supposed to be annual, but I agreed to hold it sooner, hoping it would placate my constituents. Unfortunately, it just seems to have emboldened certain elements instead. My men and I were at the Emporium in Rome as honor guard for a visiting dignitary arriving upriver by barge. Now the port is usually bustling, but just as our guests arrived, waves of people began running toward the river from streets and alleyways in every direction. They were trying to escape a terrible fire. Unfortunately, the crowd sent my horse into a panic and, I remember it, losing its footing. Edge. The next thing I knew, I was waking up on a riverbank not far from here in the company of some stranger. I went looking for my horse and discovered that lonely temple. You can probably figure out the rest. It's a cavalry officer. I had 30 men under my command. This was my uniform. As magistrate, I usually wear a toga, but today I may need to survive long enough to create the portal for you, so it seems prudent. Very well. Of course, what is it?
Why then did you say... Um, it doesn't matter. It looks like you'll have to continue your investigation. Now, was there anything else you wanted to ask? Thank you. I'll be waiting here for news. What were you two talking about? Don't play dumb. I saw you. Having a shady little chat with old man Sentius up on his balcony. If he's making a last ditch effort to pick up votes by talking to a woman, he's even more senile than I thought. Everyone knows women can't vote. What else would you be murmuring about on election day? Mark my words, Maliolus is going to be magistrate by the end of the day. And if I tell him you sided with that feeble old has-been, that you've been trying to undermine his hard-won victory, you'll have picked the wrong patron. Got it? You just made a big mistake. Maliolus is going to hear all about this, and he'll make you suffer the tortures of Tartarus while you're still alive. Sturkum Sin Coolio Mio. A new face. Ave, and may Vesta watch over you. I'm Equitia. To what do I owe the pleasure of this visit? I don't, I'm afraid. It seems to me we're exiled here until the gods judge us, one way or another. I'm quite sure it's the work of the gods. Which is strange, because they've never been particularly concerned with our misdeeds, as long as we've kept the peace of the gods. We asked for blessings, for good health, bountiful harvest, military victory, and in return, we offer praise, wine, incense, or animals. But here, it seems they require much more of us. I find myself reminded of an especially pertinent tale from our great poet Ovid in his epic Metamorphoses. Would you like to hear it? It is rather long. Wonderful. It goes like this. Vorsis and Philemon were an old married couple living a humble life in a small town. One night, the town gets a visit from a couple of vagrants. They go from door to door, asking for a place to stay the night. 
of course, being vagrants, they're turned away sharply from house after house, a thousand in all, until finally they come to the little cottage where Borsis and Philemon live. Now the kind old couple had very little to offer, but nevertheless, they invite these strangers into their house and offer them food, wine, and a place to stay. Immediately, the guests make themselves at home. They begin gulping down the old couple's wine, so much so that Borsis, the old lady, begins to worry they're going to run out. And then she notices something strange. Her wine pitcher keeps refilling itself, as if by magic, realizing only a select few possess such powers. Says to her husband, Philemon, I think these men are gods in disguise. Immediately, the couple begins apologizing for offering such coarse wine, and the vagrants metamorphosize and reveal themselves to be Jupiter, the king of the gods, and Mercury, the trickster god. They confide they didn't mind the meager offerings. They were just pleased that someone in the town offered them hospitality. Then Jupiter says to them, You have passed our test, but everyone else in this city failed, so we are going to destroy this place and everyone in it, except you, who we will grant a wish. So old Borsis and Philemon escape up into the mountains safely, and they receive their wish, which is for eternity together. Meanwhile, Jupiter carries through with his threat and wipes that city off the map. Some say the moral of that story is that we must all honor the sacred rituals of guest friendship, the reciprocal obligations owed between hosts and guests. But I like to think it's that we should always show compassion for those less fortunate than ourselves. I'm pleased to hear it. It must be completed by dusk, just the same as any other official business. It'll be between Sentius, the incumbent, and Maliolus, the challenger. Why do you ask? I'm responsible for announcing it, and making sure the procedures are followed. All of the male citizens who are willing and able to attend, unless they're running, of course. Hmm, that's just the way it's always been, I'm afraid. It never sat right with me, either. There are some women who can vote, vestal priestesses like myself, but in this case, given my role overseeing the election, I've decided to abstain. I can't allow the perception that I'm being anything but fair and independent. But if it's any consolation, there are other ways to influence the outcome of an election. By using whatever gifts the gods gave you. Nothing untoward, of course. You can, assuming they're eligible and willing to accept the nomination. said I'm planning to hold it before dusk but I suppose I could hold it sooner if there's a good reason as you wish Certainly. Oh my, I take it people are quite direct where you're from. I suppose it's quite charming in its own way. Usually, however, you wouldn't simply march up to a Vestal Priestess and without due formality or courtesy ask, what is your story?
the proper approach would be to arrange an introduction through a mutual acquaintance in high office, by which time you would already know how to address me. And then you would find a way to satisfy your curiosity rather more indirectly. But to be honest, I've often thought what an unnecessarily formal way to communicate that is. So, let's do it your way. You just keep being yourself and ask whatever you like. It'll be a refreshing change. You really don't know? You are from far away, aren't you? Well, I am one of the priestesses charged with keeping the sacred flame in Rome's shrine of Vesta burning. I take it you know who Vesta is? Vesta is the mother goddess of hearth and home, and the guardian of the Roman people. You know, I'm not entirely sure. But what about you? How did you end up here? Karen, you say? And nothing about that name seemed... odd to you. You do? Well then, have you spoken with any of the others about how they arrived here too? I really think you should. Go around and ask them what they remember and see if you notice any patterns. Good. Thank you. But please be careful. I just don't want to see what happened to Livia happen to you, too. Up until a few weeks ago, she was a perfectly productive member of our little community, darning clothes and cutting hair. She was always so chatty, always seeking out newcomers and asking them where they were from and how they wound up here. And then, about a month ago, she suddenly changed. She withdrew stopped working and became despondent, started muttering to herself. Galerius and I visited her to see how we could help, but she just looked at us with this haunted stare, called us bloodless shadows and told us we were ignorant of some pattern. Look, it could be unrelated. Perhaps she simply fell ill. Or, as Galerius suggested, the weight of the golden rule was too much for her. There is a small chance that she learned something, saw a pattern nobody else saw, and that it broke her. I just don't want to see that happen to you. So be careful, will you? Thank you. Now, go and follow the thread of truth through this labyrinth, and come back to me if you discover any patterns. Did you notice anything? A pattern? Oh, well then. Keep asking people how they wound up here. I don't want us to rush to any conclusions yet. Livia's fate weighs heavily on my mind, and dictates we should be sure. Yes, you should ask the others first. Come back to me once you've acquainted yourself with the rest of our neighbors.
many shall suffer for the sins of the one. Salve, friend. Mind telling me who you are and why you look like you've just taken on a gladiator and lost? Uh, I don't think so. I've never seen you before in my life. Oh, I guess how much did I drink last night? Uh, sorry to have bothered you. Oh, and since you seem to be in a hurry, you should try out this device I made. Worked real hard on it. Just attach the pulley to the rope over the lake and hang onto the handles. If it works, it'll be faster than walking. And if it doesn't work, Worst thing that can happen is you'll take a swim in the lake. I haven't quite summoned the courage to test it myself. But don't worry, it's completely safe. Probably. All right, see you around. Here is proof of a degenerate mark. What is it, citizen? All right. Fresh meat, huh? 